don't, I don't think I had like an aha moment, so to speak. Um, I think it was more so the, the merging of my altruistic tendencies to, to help others, you know, which has been a big part of my life outside of my career. And the, you know, the further along I got in school, the more I learned about the brain, the human mind, and the more I realized that there's a whole lot of information out there that can be used um, to improve people's situation. So I think kind of bringing those two together, um, come into the realization that I could kind of fuse these into a rewarding career. Uh, it's kind of neat and kind of is what has brought me here. Um, and then the other thing is when people hear the term psychologist, they tend to think of a psychotherapist, somebody who sits across from them and uh, you know, discusses maybe some obstacles in their life or in the past. And uh, I do a little bit of that, but for the most part, what I'm doing is testing, um, psychological, neuropsychological testing. So it's a little bit more objective, a little bit more solution focused, structured. And uh, so I'll meet with a client or parents um, for an intake session and kind of go over some of the issues, some of the concerns, uh, have a discussion about whether or not testing could help uh, shed some light on these things. And uh, you know, if so, if testing seems like a, um, we can make sense for, for their situation, then we'd move forward with that. I'd spend uh, you know, one, two, maybe three sessions with the client engaging in testing, and then wrap it all up at the end. We'll do a feedback session, which is where I kind of go over the results and recommendations moving forward. So anything from children who are struggling, having some struggles at school. Um, so I'll do some cognitive uh, you know, neuropsych testing with children, adolescents, you know, other common referrals would be kids uh, uh, where they suspect uh, that could be on the autism spectrum. Um, and uh, you know, as they get older, we're talking more about uh, possible memory concerns. So older adults I'll meet with if there's uh, you know, thoughts that memory might be declining, kind of wanting to figure out if this is kind of normative, you know, uh, stuff that happens as, as one gets older or if there's something more to it that needs to be addressed. Again, with kids, it's a lot of ADHD, learning disability, kind of cognitive issues, problems at school. And with the older adults, it's uh, more of the memory concerns. Um, and I also do pre-surgical evaluations for individuals before they embark in uh, certain kinds of procedures. Oftentimes, parents will go to their pediatrician with you know XYZ symptoms that might sound like they have an attention deficit disorder. Um, but the thing is, there can be a lot of different factors that are causing you know, the, the manifestation of, of, of said symptoms. So uh, testing is used to figure out if the cognitive profile fits with individuals with ADHD. So you know, research studies show that kids with ADHD you know, have deficits in executive functioning abilities, for example. Um, so I do a lot of different tests that kind of tap into that. Um, processing speed, working memory, short-term memory. So there's specific cognitive uh, profiles that individuals with ADHD tend to exhibit. So that's what the testing is doing, is kind of confirming that, um, you know, yes, we've got these, you know, behavioral um, concerns that fit with ADHD, but do we also have a cognitive profile that fits? Do we also have these deficits evident in multiple domains? Okay, so that would be, you know, home, school, and the community. Um, so they need to be present in multiple dom domains and need to be present at or before age seven. So this ADHD isn't something that just pops up, you know, somewhere in, the, in adolescence. You know, always been passionate about giving back to the community. And uh, I think it goes back to like high school, you know, where I'd volunteer I, in lieu of a study hall, I'd work with the special needs kids. So um, then I became a big brother uh, later on in high school to a local adolescent and uh, still am in touch with him. He's an adult now living independently down in Texas. but. Uh, um, so it was, you know, kind of spend a lot of time with him, going to his games, stuff like that, being somewhat of a you know, big brother, father figure. And uh, there's another local organization that helps kids and adults with special needs. They provide recreational services to individuals with special needs. And uh, that's been a big part of my life as well. And, and, you know, when, when I do have some, some downtime, um, I like to think that I uh, live a pretty active lifestyle, so try and incorporate something physical, you know, running, um, hiking, biking, um, um, working out uh, as often as I can. Love to travel. Um, 
whether it be just kind of getting away for a weekend up north, uh, you know, Michigan or Wisconsin, or you know, heading out to uh, jungles of Costa Rica and exploring some volcanoes and stuff like that out there. So we love to travel, uh, sports, um, um, follow the Hawks, the Bears, some soccer, some uh, baseball, and uh, when possible, uh, kind of combining those two and going and seeing one of the Chicago sports team on the road is uh, always, always fun. Um, I don't know, other kind of normal stuff, you know, checking my fantasy teams, uh, do a decent amount of cooking, grilling, just got a smoker, uh, which, yeah, some work, uh, reading, diving into a new novel, stuff like that. Mm -hmm.